the reflection of spiritual harmony in the works of an Armenian painter and art speaker is Christina Gevondian. She is an Armenian student at Tondam National University. Currently, she is doing her piece. Artist she will present today is, believe it or not, her uncle, and his name is Boris Yiggs. I'm sorry if I mispronounced it. She will pronounce it better than me. She will introduce his spiritual word, his art, his philosophy, and a really big wish that Christina has, as far as I know, and she will tell us a bit more about it later for sure, is to have her uncle's exhibition held in Korea one day. And she really hopes that people will be able to share and participate in, in his wonderful work of art. This was just a brief introduction. Now I would like to hand over the invisible mic. Christina, good afternoon, Christina. Good afternoon, Yana. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for your nice introduction. Thanks a lot, Yana. As she uh, just mentioned, today, uh, my name is Christina. Uh, I'm currently uh, studying at Chonam National University and uh, I am very thankful for this opportunity to introduce about my uncle because he is not just my uncle, he is a very uh, professional and a great artist that I want uh, people to know. So that's why, let me, shall I already share Yana my screen? Uh, yes, I think we can. We just greeted each other. Thank yes. you for <laughs> holding this talk for us and our lovely guests. I think it's time to start. There's no reason to wait. Please share the PPT. I will disappear. Everyone, enjoy the talk. Christina, please. Okay, thank you very much, Yana. Uh, oh, sorry. Not this one. Okay. Okay, so everyone, today, as uh, all of you know, I'm going to talk about an artist. His name is Boris Yeriazadian. Pardon me, Christina, uh, I this, think your PPT is not showing well. Can you please put it on a full screen? And you have like document recovery. We need your this, original PPT, please. Wait one second. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. Don't worry, it's all normal. We are online, we are on Zoom. So just please try to share it in full screen. Can you see it now? Yes, perfect, just full okay. screen. Click on the full screen, please. Yes, per okay. perfect. Okay. Please continue, sorry. No, so, I'm sorry. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about Boris Yerazarian. Uh, so the topic is, reflection of spiritual harmony in the works of Armenian painter. Uh, but before starting, there are many things uh, to tell about him, but before starting, maybe many of you uh, don't know about Armenia. I just wanted to give you a very short information about Armenia. So Armenia uh, is situated in Transcaucasia. So as you can see here, uh, it is bordered by Georgia, Turkey, Azerbaijan, and Iran. So it is a very small country with a population less than 3 million. However, it is an ancient country with a uh, rich cultural heritage. So yes, Armenia, unfortunately, the historical, historically we suffered a lot. Uh, so last year also we had war with Azerbaijan. Uh, however, uh, we are trying hard currently, uh, trying hard to again recover after the war. But the one important thing that I want to mention about Armenia is that it is the first country that adopted Christianity as an official religion. And Christianity is also going to be one of our key points uh, uh, by introducing my uncle. So. Please, I'm very, I will be very sorry if you are not 
uh, if there are some people here who are not Christian, I'm sorry, but there will be uh, a lot of talk about it because uh, my uncle is influenced by Christianity a lot. So yes, that's what I wanted to mention. And just a bit about Armenian art. So uh, some prominent forms of Armenian art is like architecture, miniature paintings, sculptures, frescoes, mosaic engraving, and textiles like carpets. You can see here carpets with some special ornaments. Uh, it's very popular in Armenia. Uh, and uh, But the special form of Armenian art is the Christian art. Because Christianity was introduced in Armenia very early, you can find its influence in, like everywhere, in every sphere of life, starting from everyday life, art, uh, like, I don't know, everything, not only art, but just architecture. So uh, this Christian art, it has a very important role, like especially iconography, miniatures, uh, original architectural churches. You can see here, these churches here, so some original architecture they have. And these are uh, also Hachkar uh, cross stones. This is also a unique uh, Armenian art. Uh, and some, uh, these are the miniatures uh, with, you know, int intense colors and with icons. Uh, yes, uh, now I'll start about my uncle. And then later I will again talk about this Armenian art and how it influenced him. So it's really uh, hard to uh, give a definition to this phenomenon called Borisia Yazarian because I just want to read, this is what her daughter said about him. So she says, Borisia Yazarian, he's Armenian, contemporary, timeless, avant-garde, uh, traditional, and artist. Any of these words would serve as a good starting point to consider his work. However, it is much more interesting to combine all these things to form a picture of one man and his creativity. So it's really hard. The more I go uh, deep into the details about him, you will understand that he is such a wonderful person and uh, like just saying he is a contemporary artist or avant-garde artist, it won't be enough. Just a starting <laughs> point uh, about him. Now like I'll give an overview. Who is Boris Yerazadeh? He So he is an Armenian-Ukrainian painter. He was born in Armenia in a small village called Abaran. But currently, he's living and working in Ukraine, Kyiv. And uh, talking about some of his main, uh, some of his main uh, certificates or some of his main awards, is that in 1908, uh, he was uh, recognized as one of the top 20 Ukrainian artists. Then, by Cambridge International Biographical Center. He got a diploma for major contribution to the 20th, 20th uh, century uh, fine art. And then he was recognized as one of the 2000 outstanding artists and designers of the 20th century. So I think this is quite a good uh, award and quite a good uh, explanation, introduction to him that he's, uh, he did a great uh, contribution to this fine art world. And he also had many exhibitions in not only Armenia and Ukraine, but also like USA, uh, I don't know, Switzerland, Greece, Germany, France, many, many countries. But apart from that, uh, recently he's not doing uh, exhibitions very often because yeah, both it's the coronavirus and also many, many things. He's mostly doing the exhibitions in Ukraine. And, but however, he has his works in different collections in museums like, I don't know, in uh, not only Ukraine, but in Armenia, uh, in Italy, in some other countries. So, and also some private collections. That's why, yes, he, you can still find him in some countries, his works in some countries. 
Uh, I would like to talk about the main influence he had. At the beginning, I mentioned about Armenian art, like gave a general uh, information. So uh, here I would like to say exactly what, by what he was influenced. So this intensity of colors, you see, these are his works. You see these colors and symbolism. It's all influenced by the Christian, uh, these miniatures or uh, paintings. Like if you see uh, here, you see these colors and there are some symbols. So it's all uh, influenced by this Christian uh, miniatures, paintings, and also icons. These icons, although uh, it's not exactly icons that he's painting, but you will see this icon like figures, like this way. So this soft tenderness in the figures, it's all this ancient and medieval Christian art. And also you will see very simple paintings and you will be like, is this really professional? Is he really professional if you see only those paintings? But it's all, I will talk about it later, it's all because of his childhood experience uh, and some experience related to children. So it's that childhood simplicity. I will tell you why I mentioned this point. Uh, here you see this miniature paintings, yes? It was mostly, um, it originates as an illustration of this handwritten manuscript, like uh, when the uh, when Christianity was introduced in Armenia, and then after that, the alphabet was created. So they wanted uh, for the Bible to have a beautiful illustration. That's why with this beautiful, uh, you see these ornaments, symbols like angels, some symbols, some, oh, sorry, some trees, the colors, this gold color, it also, uh, it symbolizes like uh, light and the purity. So you will see many of pomegranates, trees, birds, symbols, ornaments, colors, all this influence, uh, influences in his works. Not only that, but also Armenian tombstones. So these are some Armenian tombstones and this is his work. You will see this kind of, also this kind of uh, figures in his art. And also this will, yeah, you see here, this kind of stuff. So you will see a lot. Uh, that's why many people usually think that, oh, maybe he is like a Christian artist because a lot of Christian symbolism but no, it's not only Christianity, it's like a bit of everything. So you can say like contemporary expressionist, uh, avant-garde, simple traditional Christian symbols. So all this is about him. Uh, that's why like uh, his sister is also, his sister is art, my mother is art historian. So she wrote her uh, paper about him. So she was saying that, uh, you know, it's not enough to put him into this frame of ism, like, you know, symbolism or expressionism, or I don't know. It's not enough to put him in that. You don't need to put it in. And his daughter says, like, she describes her art as a borderless land of fine art. And I want to say that uh, in order to understand his art, you need to understand also what kind of person he is and what is he searching for. What is his spiritual world? That's why I would say I would call his style and him just an art called Maristia Hazarian because that's the only way you can understand him. So uh, mostly he's painting, he's um, using this oil and watercolor for his paintings. He also has some drawings, collages, fresco, sculpture, and mural paintings. These are the main things he's doing. Uh, yeah, now I would like to give a bit of detail about his personal life. So he was born, as I just tell you, in Aparat, Armenia. Uh, it's a small village. He is a very hot-tempered young man. You see, this is him, this is his wife, him, 
very hot tempered. So during a holiday, he had this holiday romance with a beautiful Ukrainian girl. He fell in love, they got married. He was 19, just 19. So yeah, they got married very young age and they gave birth to this beautiful young lady, this beautiful lady, Lucine Yehazara. So this is their family. Uh, yes, it's them. This is Lucine, him, wife, and this is me. Uh, yes, now about his academic journey, it starts at Terlemezian College of Creative Arts in 1974. And mostly he went to this uh, university, continued his studies after he got married. That's why there were some times, like in Russia, he went then, well, for one year he went to Russia. Uh, for some time they were away from each other, from the family he was away. Yes, and then the last destination he went back to Ukraine. He graduated in 1986. In 80s he had depression period. This depression, it wasn't because of a specific thing. He is a very sensitive person that takes everyone's pains personally. He suffers with everyone's pains and just the unfair, the unfairness, the pain that people are suffering, many, many things surrounding him. He just got sick just because of that. So that depression period, it was also reflected in his works. I will later talk about it. And then uh, in 1988 to 92, there was this movement in Armenia, Artsakh movement, that uh, we had a war with Azerbaijan, I just mentioned you, it was for the unification, this Armenian populated territory, so he participated. He is a patriot, he's not just an artist, he is socially active also socially, politically. So he decided that he should go and protect his, defend his uh, country. So he went to his motherland, uh, his uh, village. He gathered there a group of volunteers and as a commander, they went to war. Then he participated in Pan-Armenian Pan -Armenian movement. That is after the war and during the war, it was the time of Soviet Union. Armenia was part of Soviet Union. So it was a movement for, you know, breaking free because we wanted to be an independent country. So he participated for that also. And then he was uh, being stopped by KGB, the security, uh, national security. And then he was put into jail. Then this KGB burned his studio. That's the worst nightmare for the artist. They burned his studio with his words of 10 years and only some words were saved. However, he still could survive that because that's one of the worst nightmares. And then the new millennium, where you think that it will be happy life, new things, new life, but it was full of hardships. He lost his daughter in the car accident, Lucine. Uh, she was only around 25 years old. Uh, however, I don't know, that's maybe the love towards God only saved him because it was a really hard period. He was really connected to his daughter. And this is, he painted his daughter. And then later in 2013 and 14, he actively participated in Ukraine. There was this anti-government protest called Euromaidan, these demonstrations. He participated and even he got injured. Uh, then there was this in 2020, when you think that all hardships you already suffered, then suddenly he was diagnosed with cancer, four stage ca cancer. But still, and then his friends, they had a fundra fundraising for him. And some of it he gave to people who also suffered from cancer. Uh, yes, and thanks God, thanks God. Now he had all the, sur all the surgeries and everything. He is now recovering, thanks God. And in 2020, there was also another war for this Artsakh uh, territories. And then 
he, although he was like sick and he was having his treatment, still he was literally, literally he was painting day and night and selling his works for, for half price to help these wounded soldiers and their families. You know, I just don't want to tell this as bragging or oh, how kind he is. No, it's just to show, to understand his life, his, uh, his world. It's important to know what kind of person he is. Like he would give his last shirt to, you know, to the person he doesn't know. So here I just put a small video. I, I just want to talk a bit about him so that you also see what kind of person he is. There are many programs about him, but unfortunately it's all in Russian or Ukrainian. So yes, uh, it would be hard for you to understand it. But I just want to say that uh, he is like a kind of person. He would see like homeless people and then he would go and take care of the person. He would become friends with anyone. Uh, he's open to any person, you know, just uh, full of love and happiness. And many people will be like, oh my God, how he survived all these sufferings. If you talk to him, you will never ever think that he under, underwent through such hardships. Just because, you know, like through all these things, through all these negative things, he understood that the life is too negative to be negative towards it. So he decided that through love, through God, he will try to enjoy the life to every moment of it. And he would try to share it with people. So art, his paintings, his words is more than for him, it's for people. It's for him to share it. That's why you will see the simplicity and the mystery. It's at the same time very mysterious, but very simple. You will see. You will understand that life is very simple, like the happiness is in the simplicity. So yes, uh, he is a very special person. You can try to search some videos, even if you don't understand, you will see uh, how much energy, how hot tempered he is, you know. This is in his hometown in Aparan. So yes, uh, now I will talk a bit about his works. So he has this exp expressionism uh, period. It was in 80s. It's the period that I just told you. It was the depression period for him. So it's just a reflection of his mental and emotional state, his inner worries. At that time, you see, this is his self-portrait, but it is distorted. It's distorted because it shows his emotions his empty eyes you just saw him right but this was his emotional state at that moment this this these pictures he did at that time he went to psychiatric hospital and he was meeting the patients personally and drawing them painting their portraits this is also there he have he has even the cycle called psychiatric hospital very, very depressive and gloomy. This is the gloomiest period of his life. Yeah, and he has this self-portrait. This one you just saw. I just want to show you the difference. This is already in 92. It's called Golden Kiss. Because I'm not professional. I'm sorry, I cannot give you a professional uh, opinion. But the way I feel it is that this picture is so gloomy, empty. And uh, it's very dark. For this one, it's not only bright, but also uh, I just told you that this uh, color, this gold color, it symbolizes purity, light. It's Christian color. In Christianity, it's used. And it's also a couple, two people in the boat, on the boat. So I'm thinking, and it's kiss, golden kiss. So maybe it's the kiss of God. And his love, uh, his wife, like his love towards his wife, it's this golden kiss and his wife that saved him. So, and uh, here you see this eye, you will see eye in his uh, paintings a lot. It's the all seeing eye of God. So 
yes, I think it's love of God and his wife that he could again be recover to life. Uh, he has many portraits. All of them are very different, very different. However, uh, he is a special artist that, you know, many people can uh, draw your portrait. However, it's important not to have this, uh, like you, you look at it and they look similar. It's not only being similar, showing the personality. He is such a special artist. He can show the personality. You will feel through the eyes. It looks so alive, the picture. And this is his daughter's portrait and his wife. His wife has a very like blue eyes. She has very blue eyes and he, uh, he really like portraits here very well. Yes, yeah, so I saw some, some of the people in the portraits because I saw it. I know how perfectly he gave all those emotions, the feelings that the person has inside. He also has some drawings, uh, but these drawings are not for exhibitions. He just, this for instance, for this ones, these are done in this uh, mental hospital, in the psychiatric hospital he went, some of the people's hospital. You see the same emptiness as he had in his eyes. This expression, looking nowhere. Uh, this one is his uh, grandmother that he loved a lot. And she, he has also some drawings of some young, beautiful ladies. Yes. Collages is also a main part of his art. Especially you will see a lot of pomegranates everywhere. It's everywhere. So this combination of different interesting ornaments, different uh, kind of uh, things, it just makes it full, of, full and yes, very interesting. Now about this harmony and this combination of colors. Usually it's very hard to combinate bright colors and get something nice, something in harmony, but he is such a, I don't know how to say, such a wonderful person, but such an interesting person, like to be able to combinate these colors and still get this harmony. Uh, yes, this is one of his key points. This is one of the main things when you say bodies, then you think of these bright colors. Now, my friends also, friends that know his uh, art, I already like introduced them. They always, when we go somewhere and they see some bright colors, they're like, oh, this is like your uncle, because that's the thing that usually people think of him. Pomegranates, as I just mentioned, is also, he has this series of pomegranates. You, you may think it's the same thing, but it's not. They may be similar, but still they are all different. This is also like, this has a meaning. You saw also in miniatures. So it's a Christian, it has some Christian meaning. Like the meaning is, uh, it uh, symbolizes church and the people, the seats are people, religious people inside it. So, not only that, but also it's been, pomegranate has been like a part of this Armenian art. If you go to Armenia, you will see many, many architectural or I don't know, some uh, paintings. Uh, yeah, many, like a lot of pomegranates everywhere. And uh, I talked, uh, I before I told you that this childhood simplicity, he has this childhood simplicity in his works. Sometimes if you don't see his previous works, you may think, oh my God, is he a painter? Because this looks so simple. But, uh, so there was this period of depression, I, um, I just told you that, so after this depression, it was very hard for him to find again his style. And for some time he couldn't even paint. And then he decided to go to teach at school, to teach painting at school. There, they were children. So there he found his real, his true colors and his language because he felt the important thing was sincerity and innocence and this freedom that children had 
So children taught him again to like to uh you know to enjoy and uh, to enjoy this uh simplicity and to be sincere what you are what you are giving to people it's not you you just do whatever you feel so that's the way he found his colors and his uh freedom his sincerity so he declared himself some in some articles you may see he is an adult painter drawing uh children's like uh, paintings for example fishes some square like squares like this yes so it's just how he feels so that way he wants to show that the happiness and the beauty like this just this small like flowers i don't know it's just in simple things and how to enjoy it how to love it he's trying to show through his works uh he has also many lots of christian symbols many of you may know like uh, fish fish symbolizes jesus christ uh, like this pomegranate gold color angels uh, noah's ark oh, like many many things i this all-seeing eye he has in his works light uh, that symbolizes the purity yes uh, so many 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 uh, symbols you will find it in his works and also like icon like figures i just told you about that this all looks like icons although they are not but they look like that uh, and also he created one icon he created is the this virgin mary with jesus for the altar of the fourth century church of saint cross it is in his hometown of Bara. so if you go there you will find this it is a really nice work about some other stated symbols that he has is this will like downcast you will see this downcast eyes uh, ladies many places many in many pictures kings lion like the idea of two two in the boat you just saw it and i don't know birds music motherhood family you will see that a lot i would like to talk a few words about this is one of my favorite works it's just so that you understand so that we have one uh, word a bit in detail so you understand how his, what is his message so here you see this ladies with their downcast cast eyes and they are three right and also you see here this um fish and it symbolizes jesus christ and there is the all-seeing eye it symbolizes god god so you can see either like three girls as trinity or girls jesus and i that is god as a trinity and the, this work is called love so only through god and through jesus we will find love this is his message you know uh yeah and these are some other paintings that you will see this is like the king this uh, theme of two motherhood music theme is also worth of uh, worth of mentioning because uh you know how he can reflect this music through these colors you can feel it you know the first time i saw these pictures i was like very like uh shock because i could feel the music i could feel uh how wonderful it is you know just this all this atmosphere so it's very interesting how he gives you the feelings of music through his works yes like this and uh like this much about his works i would like also to mention a bit about his daughter Lucine, uh, because she followed in his father's step, uh, and she was also a painter. And this is my mother. She painted my mother. And the interesting thing is that 
many people painted my mother's portrait, but no one could give the personality, her feelings. And this is like perfectly how my mother looked at that time. So she was a very, she was a wonderful person, a wonderful artist, unfortunately. Uh, she couldn't because of this accident. Uh, but however, yeah, I just wanted to tell you that his daughter was also a wonderful artist and a wonderful person. If you hear her talking, she's so kind. She's like an angel. And yeah, and for the end, I just would like to talk about some of the important people that had like influence on his life uh, that he loved a lot. This is Lucine. This is his wife, his mother. She, he loved his mother a lot, mother, father. This is his best friend and his teacher, both in art and in his religious, uh, you know, religious life. He taught him a lot. This is his family, his wife, and this is his lovely brother. He also passed away because of cancer a few years ago. So yeah, these are the people that inspired him. Uh, you can follow him if you are interested on Facebook. Uh, these are his. Facebook, this is his, uh, about his works. This link is for his works and this is his personal. He loves people. So if you write him, he will always answer you. Even my friends, when he knows my friends, like Yana was asking me, how is your uh, uncle? And then I told him that she's praying for him. And then he was like, oh my God, thanks to your friend. He was very tired. He's very open to people, very, very. And uh, I wrote an article about him. You can read this uh, in Kwangju News. Thanks a lot to Meli and uh, GIS for this opportunity in this April edition. You can read about him in detail. And uh, for the last, you know, many people tell me, why you want to introduce your uncle here? Why, why Korea? I mean, you want to sell his works or what? No, the reason I want to introduce him is that he is full of love. He is recreating the reality through the, his works. And the reality is that life is beautiful. Life is in simple things. To love, he teaches us how to love, how to enjoy every moment of life. So the reason I want to introduce in Korea is that first is uh, Korea, Korean people, they know how to appreciate art especially in Gwangju, there are many people, there are many galleries here and many people that I met that are interested in art. So I think Korea will be a great place to introduce his words and him. And the second, even if I were, if, even if I was not in Korea, but somewhere like Russia or I don't know, Europe, I would still want to introduce him because I want more, more people to know what is, uh, what is kindness, uh, what is love, and what is just being human, taking care of everyone, you know, not thinking only about yourself, but thinking of other people, and loving life, whatever it is, however hard it was, just enjoying it and helping people, and recreating this beautiful, I don't know, all these things, you know, it just makes this complex uh, person, complex artist called Boris Yerazarian. He is a wonderful person. I hope, I know that I wasn't professional and I know that it, the information wasn't enough still to fill him, but I hope I could at least give you some feelings, you know, about what kind of person and artist he is. And in the end, this is my uncle and me, because today you heard my presentation about him and you heard my presentation we both of us we are thankful uh for your attention and for your time and if you have you have any questions please feel free to ask whatever you have. thank you thank you christina for this presentation full of love to begin with i may say that it seems like love and the feelings of sharing love and sharing care definitely seem to run in your family. I mean, I could feel the love 
from you while you were talking about your uncle, but also looking at his paintings, I could definitely feel the love that he wants to share with the world. So thank you very much for this lovely, lovely talk. I must admit that I have quite a couple maybe even more than a couple questions myself that I was jotting down during your talk. But of course, our other participants and listeners should, should have the, the first word. So I will take a look at the chat room and see what questions we got. We have comment from Mabul Hake. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that well. Great and wonderful. And we also have a question. The question is, did he rebuild his life? What can you tell about that? Did he rebuild his life? Yes, until now. Rebuild, like in what sense? Uh, like uh, rebuild, if you mean to change his life, in uh, somehow after all his hardships and anything well maybe sorry to interrupt you maybe yeah. mr mabul hake can unmute himself and ask yeah. like directly if you don't mind okay uh, thank you very much this is mahul from bangladesh uh, i at first introduce myself i am uh, a human rights activist and working as the executive director with Bangladesh Center for Human Rights and Development, BCESRD. BCESRD is a human rights organization and has been working for the torture and trauma rehabilitation for last 25 years in Bangladesh. Uh, and, you know, I visited Gonzu um, City and also um, May 18 Memorial Foundation. And we have developed partnership with uh, May 18 Memorial uh, Foundation and also Gonzo Human Rights Peace Foundation uh, for the protection and promotion of the human rights in Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. My question, I think uh, I have seen your presentation, really wonderful and great presentation. And some also uh, I have seen, uh, you mentioned some uh, psychiatric problem, traumatized problem. Uh, uh, my question was, uh, yeah. he did your uh, uncle uh, like uh, recover his trauma uh, or pain? Like uh, trauma is a continuous process for, uh, uh, you know, uh, to build, uh, to recover this, it will take so many time. Uh, did he uh, recover his trauma uh, or rebuild? Thank you for your question, Mr. Mabul. Thank you. Now, Christina, what can you say now that you hear a bit in more detail the question? Yes, thank you very much for the question. Yes, actually, he did. Thanks, God, uh, both physically and mentally. Physically, he is still recovering. But mentally, as I told you, like, uh, like with, I'm sorry that to mention about this Christianity and God a lot, it's not some, you know, uh, meaningless words, but for him, it's all that love that he has towards God through that thing and helping people, even if, if he is in a hard uh, condition, always like helping people, praying. He, he says, if I'm painting, I'm praying. That's one of his saints. Mm -hmm. So, yes. So, thanks to all those things and his positive attitude towards life, he is now mentally completely recovered. That is great to hear. Thank you for the question and thank you for your answer. Christina, we have another comment from Meline saying, I'm not an art expert, but these paintings are really amazing. I can feel the emotions they transmit. I would definitely agree with that. And speaking of, I think you, Christina, also mentioned uh, a, more than a couple of times that I'm not an art expert, I'm not an expert. This is an open discussion. It's, it doesn't really matter whether we are experts or not. It is okay to mention, you know, to put some, some boundaries on what we're saying, but still, we can just discuss how we feel and what we see. So I'm also inviting all of you listeners who are here, you can either raise your hand and unmute yourself and share your opinion and feeling what you felt 
it doesn't have to be just a question. You can just give some comment or if you don't feel like unmuting yourself and talking, you can also just type it in the chat room. I would like to start. I am very selfish as a host. I would like to start. When you were talking about his um, self-portrait from 1989, mm -hmm. you mentioned several times, you know, about his eyes, how they look empty. That is your feeling of that painting, right? That is how you feel it. Mm -hmm. I actually wanted to share that for me, the most striking characteristic in that painting is how big the eyes are. Mm. You know, there is the saying, I'm pretty sure in many languages, that the eyes are windows to your soul. So in my opinion, when I saw that no matter how, okay, I could feel the energy of being traumatized, but seeing big eyes, for me, it was a signal this person wants me to take a look into his soul. He wants to share his emotional, his inner life with us. And then in the end, when you said that he is a very, you know, sociable person, I felt like, aha, uh -huh, so I was right. He does want to, to share with people. So what do you think? Am I wrong on that? No, no, no. You are completely right, Yana. I didn't actually pay attention on the big eyes but I think you are completely right because his personality is giving giving everything his emotions and everything showing it so he always shows his inner world as I told you he's always painting whatever he feels he never fakes it so at that moment you are right maybe it was kind of look at me maybe I don't know either uh, he wanted just to show or ask for help uh, but I think you are right it just shows his inner world through his big eyes yes it's just uh, that painting is really like at the beginning when i saw it i couldn't believe that this this is my uncle's work because it's completely different like uh, if you look at his uh, colorful you know works uh, and his everything and it's completely different so yes at that moment it was that kind of emotional state and he just wanted to scream about it and to show it and he did it yeah so you are right thank you for thank you for your comment as you can see everyone please just feel free this was just my absolutely personal opinion okay we are getting wow a couple of questions from dr shin so i will start reading them the first one is what was the role of Christian churches in Armenia when people suffered? Can you tell us a bit about that? Oh, when, uh, well, the role, for example, this time when the war started, I, don't, I cannot tell you in detail how was it before, but this time in 2020, many, many priests, they went, they were giving uh, some places, for example, in the, area Arta when the war was going on they were giving places to people homeless people because people lost their home so people were staying at churches they were taking care they were praying together so yeah churches church has a very important role uh, not only spiritually but also like they were helping them mm -hmm. uh, with uh, yes Mm -hmm. Thank you for your answer, Christina. Thank you, Dr. Shin, for many of the questions. I, I will continue reading them. So the second question is, how is the church helping the people now at the current national crisis? But I believe you just answered that. Do you have to add anything about that? Oh, well, that, no, no. For now, for instance, after the war, uh, I didn't see any special things. Mostly maybe like some priests personally, they go to that area, they take some help, they uh, have some uh, fun fundraising and they go and help them and they do some uh, maybe ceremonies. So mm -hmm. yeah, that mm -hmm. kind of that way. I see, thank you. Moving on, a very interesting question that I was about to ask myself. How were you influenced by art yourself? Also a question by Dr. Shin. Yes, I'm actually very ashamed to answer this question. Oh, no, come on. Because uh, I was raised in this family of uh, artists and my mom was an art historian. 
but because of that they i was too much into art i was always against it oh i don't like art what is art i don't like art always and only recently it was again thanks to yana knows uh, the story we experienced it together but only thanks to kwangju thanks to especially yang im dong i love yang im dong because many galleries there thanks to kwangju i uh, experience I discovered this uh, art and after that I understood because I was always looking at my uncle as just my uncle not an artist and then I understood oh my god I have the coolest uncle in the world I should try to introduce him and at that time already it's been like maybe no more than one year that I'm interested in art so yeah that's the way I got interested I see so as you can hear everyone, Guangzhou also played a huge part in Christina being this involved in art and actually wanting to present her uncle even more because when she saw the beautiful art in Guangzhou, she got more inspired to talk about the art of her country. Now, the final question from Dr. Shin is, did you ever want to be an artist yourself? Again, you answered half of it already, but yeah. please answer again. Yes, I never, no, I never had that, uh, no feelings at all. Never, I felt that, oh, I have some kind of uh, artist, you know, personality or some kind of skills. No, unfortunately, no. <laughs> But I can understand you, again, sharing our personal lives. Everyone in my family is a doctor, and I never wanted to be a doctor. <laughs> so I, I'm, I think it's true what you said when you are surrounded by, let's say, the same things when you're growing up, like only art, you kind of want to escape from that. Yes. Not in yeah. a bad way, just sometimes you don't just follow in those footsteps. So thank you for your answer. Thank you for your questions, Dr. Shin. Another question for you, Christina, that is um, something that I wanted to ask you from the beginning. That is, you said you would like to have your uncle's exhibition here in Korea. Are you actively working on it? And if you are, what is the way in which the exhibition would be able to be held here, if you can share. Yeah, sure. Actually, I heard, I still didn't uh, find the details, but I heard that in GIC there are some uh, programs that they uh, help international uh, the students, not only students, but just uh, foreigners, if they have some ideas. So I'm thinking maybe to apply for that and to make a small exhibition for the beginning because in order to uh, find like professional people interested in helping, you need to have something small at least so that people know about him. So I'm thinking now this summer I will go to Armenia and my uncle sent some works to Armenia. So I will get that works and I hope if uh, I can get some funding, then maybe I will also uh, yeah, get some works and do a small exhibition. Uh, like, yeah, to get some uh, area, some gallery, some gallery and do exhibition. That's my dream. <laughs> and then maybe a bigger one. That is a beautiful dream. And I don't know about everyone else listening now, but I can say I, will, I would definitely go to that exhibition. I really... Actually, in art, I like bright colors, so I'm pretty sure I would enjoy seeing his works in, in person. And I really hope your dream will come true. I really hope that everything will go well, and I hope that your uncle will be um, healthy for a long time to keep creating his art. We don't have a lot of time left. I see Mr. Mabu want, would like to share some more comments. So please, you can unmute yourself again and share what you wanted to say. Thank you very much, Jana. Uh, at first, I would like to give a big thanks for your nice presentation. Uh, like uh, for your, uh, as a host, you are uh, really, presenting a wonderful uh, talking about this matter. Uh, you know, 
uh, painting is uh, the more important to prevent trauma. Uh, and uh, yeah, I have seen your presentation. Uh, you mentioned psycho uh, problem like uh, you know, me, uh, mental well-being for traumatized people. Painting uh, therapy, art therapy is the good uh, for uh, their recovery. Uh, do you feel uh, any uh, activities uh, to conduct uh, for uh, recovery of uh, trauma or trauma uh, rehabilitation? Uh, uh, through the art therapy, my question. And another issue, you know, uh, in the, uh, I know the Gonju May 18 memorial issues, uh, uh, Gonju democratic uprising, so many people uh, are traumatized. You know, uh, in Bangladesh, 1.2 million Rohingyas people, they are living in Bangladesh as refugee. They come from Myanmar. Um, you know, my, and uh, Myanmar military junta thoughts are uh, on them. Uh, my question here, so many um, traumatized people, uh, do you have any idea or any plan uh, to uh, recovery in the trauma uh, or pain and by through the uh, art therapy or painting? Uh, and Gonju International Center uh, really in doing great job uh, regarding these issues, Gonju Truck. Uh, I did not attend last three uh, Gonju Truck. Uh, I am sorry, but um, this time I attend here and I gained some new knowledge from the Christina. Really wonderful. And uh, I already uh, I am working in Bangladesh regarding uh, music therapy, art therapy, and also uh, drama therapy mm -hmm. yeah, for the uh, recovery of uh, uh, torture and trauma. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, in many peoples in Bangladesh, they are also uh, they were tortured by the state, uh, like state uh, violence and uh, torture from uh, torture of trauma survivor in here they are uh, suffering so many challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, my organization also working um, for their rehabilitation in Bangladesh and in a holistic approach. Uh, holistic approach, so many uh, dimensions in here, like doctors, physicians, uh, musicians, and also art therapy is also key role to uh, prevent the uh, trauma. Uh, and uh, I would like to thanks to Gondu International Center. And they organize really great, wonderful, Truck uh, and uh, I would like to go to Christina. Uh, in my two question, if you uh, uh, say something about this matter. Thank you, Mr. Mabu. Thank you very much. And you are very well aware, yes, that we did have previous talk about the crisis in Myanmar, as you mentioned. And we did have a special talk about the May 18th. You are very well aware of the things we are doing. One thing I would like to channel before Christina starts answering your important question. One thing actually I would like to add is that Christina did her internship in the past in Guangzhou Trauma Center. So I think Christina, you can connect the thoughts of art therapy with your experience in the uh, Guangzhou Trauma Center as an intern there. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, thank you for the question, Diana. Yes, thanks a lot uh, for relating into Trauma Center because actually in Trauma Center, we also had this art therapies. So usually, yes, many uh, people who they were like, uh, they are suffering, they still have all their traumas and uh, different, we had like different topics and uh, some different activities. And through those kind of art activities, people were trying to express either what they feel or how they want to feel. And it was really helping very, it was helping them very much. And uh, about my uncle, I would say that uh, sometimes he's having some master, uh, some uh, master, Oh, master classes, master classes, I'm sorry, master classes. 
so sometimes he's having some classes. So he also had classes like drawing with uh, people with disabilities. So they were drawing together. Uh, so he had some experience. And also I would, I think for me is that, you know, the hardest time for him that he couldn't paint. And then he went to teach at school and through all like doing those simple, simple like paintings, I don't know, fish, some squares, those things try to again find like the happiness and the simple that everything starts from the simple things. So I think that's also somehow our therapy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what I can I think comment about that. Thank you, Christina. I, I do believe that this is obviously a form of art therapy and art therapy is important in healing many, many different types of trauma, whether it is some sort of personal trauma or trauma caused by uh, violence, uh, by violence by the state, as it's the case of the current Myanmar coup and current, and pardon me, past uh, Guangzhou May 18th, um, um, accidents and happenings during that time. Thank you everyone for your participation. Our time is up already. Believe it or not, time flies when we are enjoying with art. I would like to thank you, Christina, for this amazing presentation full of love, sharing the art and sharing the amazing spiritual harmony and the amazing world of Boris I think I got it right this time. Um, is there something you would like to say for the end, some closing comment before we all say goodbye? Yes, I just want to thank to everyone uh, for joining here. Really, I appreciate a lot. Uh, uh, I know that there were, I'm, I, I couldn't, although Yana will get angry, <laughs> I wasn't like a professional, <laughs> but uh, I tried, I just wanted to introduce uh, a, a wonderful person and a wonderful artist. So thank you very much for listening. Thanks to GIC for this wonderful opportunity and thanks for Yana for having this uh, wonderful uh, introduction and uh, yes, for hosting, hosting me. Yeah, today. <laughs> Thank you. It was our pleasure to have you here. This will be all for today's GIC talk. I hope you all enjoyed this sunny Saturday afternoon. I wish you all a lovely rest of the weekend. Be healthy, stay safe. Robin Kay also says good weekend. Yes. Uh, enjoy. What I would like to say is that next week there will be no GIC talk, so I won't meet you here in Zoom next week, but in two weeks, because next week we are having free cycle here at GIC. If you would like to come, you can come next Saturday. If you would like to give some things for donation, the deadline for donation is Monday, so no later than Monday. And if you come to the free cycle on the day, the entrance fee is 1001. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a lovely rest of the weekend, and I will see you here again in two weeks. Goodbye. <laughs>